Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. In today's stream, I want to talk about Bill Gates, one of the richest men on earth. Is he warming up to Bitcoin? Possibly. Possibly also another very famous gold bug. No, not Peter Schiff. Someone that is much more known and much wealthier amidst defeat about gold. So there's a lot to talk about. Obviously, Bitcoin is still doing very well, hovering around $52,000. And that is despite the fact that the stock market, the broader market is having a red day today, which makes it even more impressive. And also, uh, I got to talk about the one project that I've been talking about for a while, and that is Binance and Binance Smart Chain and BNB, because they are on an absolute tear at this point. So there's a lot to talk about, guys. Thanks for tuning in. As always, uh, I have two streams, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time and 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So make sure you don't miss out. Hit that, smash up that like button, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell and follow me on Twitter and Facebook as well. All right, guys, let's get started. Those of you guys that's in the chat already, thank you and welcome. And let's do this. Let me change my screen here. Uh, here we go. There we go. All right. So Bitcoin, like I said, it's right around $52,000. I kind of expected Bitcoin to be a little bit weaker today, seeing how to yesterday we shot up to like 52.5, right? But right now, the, it, there's just so much strength with Bitcoin. So it's not even taking a breather. I mean, right now, down 300 points is about the extent of it. Bitcoin is very, very, very strong right now. Like I said, it was a big monumental achievement to break into 50s. It's halfway to six digits. $50,000 is a huge psychological level too, if you think about it, right? There's like a there's like a pizzazz to saying Bitcoin is at 50,000, right? There's just something about it that's very different than saying, oh, it's at 45 or 40 or 30, right? And uh, many are predicting that we will never see <laughs> the likes of 30s again, possibly even 40s again. That's how bullish people are these days. And we got a lot of converters, a lot of converters, possibly including Bill Gates now. And also, of course, this big gold bug. But I'm going to show you why. Uh, why? You know what? Everyone's converting. Well, I've been telling you why already, but <laughs> there's more reasons why. Seems like every single day. Now, besides Bitcoin being hot, guess what? Guess who else is hot? Yes, BNB continues to be on fire. It has gone up so much. It is now number four on CMC, surpassing Cardano and Polkadot as the leader chain, the second most used chain, or second, I should say, highest price chain, besides uh, Ethereum in terms of smart contracts, network protocol, stuff like that, right? So Binance has just overleaped them, and there's good reason why. I've been talking a lot about them, and I'll talk about more about them uh, in a little bit. But let's get to the news. Let's. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. First of all, I did mention how today is a red day. And, you know, traditionally in the past, you have stocks and Bitcoin kind of go in tandem. There's like some correlation but now Bitcoin is showing that it can stand on its own. It's been showing that ever since 2020 happened, right? Obviously, the stocks have gone up, but, you know, kind of kind of faltered as of late, but not Bitcoin. Bitcoin continues to go up and gain momentum, and more and more people are converters now. There, there's a lot more Bitcoin holders now than ever, and it continues to rise higher and higher and higher. All right, so let's talk about... This guy right here, uh, Bill Gates, who I believe is still the world's third richest man. He was the world's richest man forever until he just decided that he didn't care anymore. <laughs> he he, he uh, left uh, Microsoft. He left Microsoft a long time ago. People still blame him for like what Microsoft does. No, he's not involved at all anymore. Uh, he's doing philanthropy now. Um, you know, he has the Bill Gates and Melinda Foundation, and he does a lot of work in Africa. Uh, and people like to hate on him, saying that he spread COVID on purpose to make himself richer. I mean, come on, the guy has like $200 billion. Uh, 
So he's doing just fine, just fine. But in the past, he has been very, very, very bearish on Bitcoin because his his best bud is Warren Buffett. Somehow him and Buffett just got along, right? You know, maybe the world's richest people that get along. I don't know, you know, if that's a, <laughs> that's a coincidence or not. But uh, because Warren Buffett is so negative on Bitcoin, Bill Gates was very negative on Bitcoin, right? But Bitcoin is something that can't be ignored anymore. In the past, it's easy to say Bitcoin is used for um, illegal stuff, drugs, hiding money, laundry money, all that stuff, right? People kind of gotten away from that narrative because now the narrative is it's a hedge. It's, a, it's the ultimate hedge, right? And publicly traded companies, legit companies... <laughs> And hedge funds and countries and everyone else is buying in, right? So the narrative has changed. So now when asked about Bitcoin, Bill Gates is like, yeah, I'm neutral. I'm neutral. He's not bearish anymore. So he did change his uh, tune, but not, not all the way, not a complete 180. So just to quote him, I don't own Bitcoin. I'm not short Bitcoin. I do think moving money into a digital form and getting transaction costs down, that's something that Gates Foundation does in developing countries. So it, it seems like he's warming up. It does seem like he's really warming up to the idea of blockchain, crypto, and Bitcoin, right? I, I mean, at this point, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? It's not like, you know, he's not like Peter Schiff where he missed out on billions by not investing early. Bill Gates... I mean, he's a neutral party. Regardless if Bitcoin does well or not, it doesn't really affect his pockets. He's already worth $200 billion, right? So, you know, it just doesn't make any sense that he would keep pressing on the fact that Bitcoin is only used for legal activities and there's nothing good about it, right? So I do think he's coming around. He's seeing the light and seeing the, 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 the good that he's doing with his foundation, you know, utilizing crypto would be fantastic, because the countries that he's involved with, most of the citizens don't even have a bank account. That's one of the main purposes of crypto is that you can become your own bank. And all these people that's in Africa that have phones, but they're not bank accounts. You know what? Then financial apps and blockchain and crypto makes a whole lot of sense, right? So I think it's just a matter of time Bill Gates comes around. I think someone like Warren Buffett is just too late. It's not going to happen in his lifetime. I don't think so. But someone like Bill Gates, I think I think he's going to come around. So this is this is a step in the right direction. Now, Bill Gates, uh, despite the fact he has more money than God, he did not always see things. Um, he's not a visionary. Let's put it that way. He's he's no Elon and he's no Steve Jobs. OK, um, there's been numerous examples over the years that he has just missed out completely on trends. And I remember this because when I was in high school, I purchased this book. A lot of you guys may have read this book, <laughs> The Road Ahead. This was kind of like his first big book in terms of how he sees the future uh, evolving, what the future will be, right? And this was when Microsoft was like on top of the world. Except he didn't know anything really about the internet. I remember when he was talking about this book, he went to some university or, some, or somewhere and someone asked him, what do you think about the internet? And he really had no clue, no clue. And even in this book, he writes that the internet is just novelty, that something else was going to be coming along and make it much better. And then after he published his book, he had to come out the revision like a year later because he realized what he said was so stupid. Then he changed his book to say, yeah, the internet is here and it's going to be fantastic. So as you can see, <laughs> he's, not, he's not a visionary. He's not a first to get involved with something, right? Maybe the first with PCs and software. Or even then, that was Apple. Um, but yeah, I think uh, he, you know, he, 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 can't, he didn't see the vision about Bitcoin early on. But I do think he'll come around. He'll come around. That's, that's my whole point. <laughs> and when he comes around and let's say he plops his 200 billion into Bitcoin, that'll be fantastic. That'll be fantastic. <laughs> All right. Moving on from here. What else is there? 
This guy, known as the Bond King, I don't know who he is. A lot of you guys, maybe you're gold bugs, um, and you know who he is, but he's a big, big gold bug. Uh, Double line CEO Jeffrey Gunlatch, I believe. Um, he is uh, he's the CEO of Double Line Capital, an investment firm with more than 100, 130 billion in assets under management. That's quite a lot. Not in the trillions, but still 130 billion in assets. That's quite a lot. And he is a gold a gold bug. But look at this latest tweet. I am a long-term dollar bear and a gold bull, but have been neutral on both for the for over six months. Lots of liquid uh, poured into a funnel creates a torrent. Bitcoin may be the stimulus asset. Doesn't look like gold is. So it looks like he's giving up on gold. <laughs> it looks like he's like, you know what? Uh, go into Bitcoin. It just seems like he has done a 180 previously as reported he's like I don't believe in bitcoin but you know when you're when you're trying to buy something that hedges against inflation it actually has to hedge against inflation if you're just believing it and it doesn't actually do what it's supposed to do then then any intelligent person would change their mind right that's why he said he's over the last 6 months he's kind of changed his mind you know why because um look at this well before i show you that look at this this is a gold chart over the last 15 years, going back to 2006, right? Now, gold had a good run from 2006 all the way up to 2011 when it peaked around 1850 per ounce. Since then, it has gone down, it has gone up, and where it is now today is the same level it was at 10 years ago. So, you could argue that for the last 10 years, gold has been a horrible horrible and hedge against inflation because it is actually at the same price as it was 10 years ago and we know inflation has happened over the last 10 years tremendously tremendously um so for the last 10 years gold has been horrible horrible as a, a hedge against inflation right but i get it people buy gold because they're afraid of inflation they want something to hedge against it and they don't know what else to buy and back in over here bitcoin was just too small no one no one heard of bitcoin no one heard of bitcoin back then right people started hearing about bitcoin over here but still they didn't really believe in it but now that bitcoin is above fifty thousand dollars it's hard to ignore people are paying attention say okay bitcoin is, is the only one the only asset class out there that continues to go up against even gold, the dollar, against everything else, right? So that is actually the ultimate store of value. And that's why our gold bugs are converting, right? And ultimately, the, you know, the thing is there shouldn't even be, there shouldn't even be fighting among gold bugs and Bitcoin bugs because ultimately both parties believe in the same thing. They believe the dollar is getting more worthless year over year over year. And they want something that hedges against inflation, that they want to buy something, an asset that doesn't devalue over time. The, mon the buying power doesn't decrease every, you know, every year, right? Um, so, I mean, both sides should really just get along, just like how Tesla and Bitcoin kind of combine. Gold and Bitcoin should just kind of combine, too, at least the, the, <laughs> the people that's involved. But it could be an age gap thing or something like that. But... I showed this to uh, to you guys yesterday. You know, if you look at the gold to Bitcoin ratio, it's just uh, it's just horrible, horrible. Uh, back in March of last year, when everything tanked, you know, the ratio was about 0.35. Um, but now that has dropped to 0 0.035. So that's ten. That's ten x, man. <laughs> it went up. To, it, the the gold BTC ratio went down like ninety percent. Meaning that gold has lost 90% versus Bitcoin. That's how bad it is. So, yeah, that's why everyone is turning, turning to Bitcoin. And if you look at the overall the overall market cap of all the assets in the world, um, you could see that gold is still at 11 trillion. It has come down. It was like 12 or 13 trillion recently. Come down to 11. But guess what? Bitcoin continues to fly higher. It's number eight number eight right behind google right behind silver 
right? And you know this is going to keep climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing. And once Bitcoin passes one trillion, that's it. it it's 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 a figure that that no one could ignore at that point. We're already there, but one trillion just sounds better, right? And it's surprising enough for those of you guys that are, you know, Ethereum bugs, you look at Ethereum. Ethereum is rated at 48. Ethereum has a bigger market cap than Coca-Cola. Think about that. Bigger market cap than Toyota and AT&T. I mean, that's pretty amazing itself. Ethereum is actually, if it was a company, it would be the 46th largest company in the world. In the world. And that's, that's pretty amazing to think about, too. Right now, speaking of Ethereum, there's been a lot of talk about how Ethereum somehow the price is being suppressed. I don't think so because it's made all time highs 1900. But according to this article, uh, you may want to watch out. It looks like there is too many people that's too bullish on Ethereum at this point that there it is over leveraged, specifically in the, on the long side. And whenever you have too many longs. You know what tends to happen? There's a long squeeze. So that, that's what this article is warning you about, that there is a there is an enormous amount of long leverage on Ethereum, which is why it pushed a new high. It's so 1900 now. But be careful. There could be there could be a correction right around the corner. But overall, uh, Ethereum is just doing just fine. It's the big dog of network protocols and networks and that is why it is over $200 billion and why it is considered a 46th biggest company on earth. That's pretty amazing. All right. What else is there? A uh, few other things. Number one, uh, Robinhood allows crypto deposit and withdrawal. I, I don't believe this happened yet. If you guys are using Robinhood, you guys confirm. But I don't believe they're planning on this. I don't believe it actually happened yet. If does if this does happen and that makes Robinhood a full fledged exchange, um, and they're they're basically providing wallets, right? Right now, financial apps like Square, PayPal, Robinhood, they'll allow you to buy, but it's locked in there, so it's not really like an exchange at all. It's not really like a wallet. They're basically just holding it for you. You can't do anything with it. But if Robinhood allows this. I could see how a lot of people will move to Robinhood or just stay there once they buy, right? I think this is a really good move for them. Obviously, a lot of bad press right now uh, around Robinhood, but despite that, they're still a very, very, very known and well-used brokerage app, and this will turn them into basically a full-on exchange, which is kind of interesting, and I think it's going to help a lot. I think it's going to help them a lot and help the crypto sphere overall a lot too. So now people that buy in Robinhood, if they're smart about it, they can transfer out and transfer the crypto to a hardware wallet or anywhere else. So that's a step in the right direction. Now, uh, another thing is Canada. Canada has approved two Bitcoin ETFs. And to my surprise, Michael told me um, that the first one already started trading today. That was so fast, <laughs> so fast. It just got approved like last week, and now it's uh, it's trading already, and the volume is already increasing. So you have one in Canada already, another one that's coming out pretty soon, and you know the U.S. is going to come out with it. And all of these uh, funds require the manager, or at least these are physically subtle ones. So they require the, f the fund manager to actually have Bitcoin to be able to offer these ETFs, right? So the more people that buy, the more Bitcoin is going to go up. Another reason why Bitcoin is being so strong right now and why, you know, the overall market is not doing good, but Bitcoin is doing good, right? All these things add up. So this is also very positive. And lastly, a German cannabis firm hedges Bitcoin, basically buys Bitcoin because they see massive currency devaluation, the German dollar or the euro, uh, whatever they're using, they see it uh, devaluing in front of their eyes and they want to protect and they want to hedge against inflation. Bitcoin, that's, that's, that was the whole thing. That's the whole thing I was just saying. If you're looking for a hedge against inflation right now, against all basically all currencies around the world, all fiat currencies basically just decreasing in front of your eyes because of the endless printing that's going on, right? The ultimate one, the, actually not the ultimate one, the only choice really at this point 
is Bitcoin. Because you buy gold, you realize that it hasn't hedged at all because it's the same price it was 10 years ago, which means that it has inflated just like everything else, just like the USD. So what other option do you have? Do you do you take a risk with stocks, which seems like they're, they're overblown right now, artificially inflated because of all the printing? I mean, what other option is there? Well, the other option is Bitcoin, right? Here's, a, here's another thing that shows you. I've been showing you guys this. The US dollar versus Bitcoin, how much sats you could buy. And you could see how much things have depreciated over time. You don't realize it. You don't realize it if you're trying to value it against like, I don't know, food or say, right? You value it against a Happy Meal. <laughs> Happy Meal pretty much stayed the same price for a long time, but the burgers and everything else, the portions have gotten smaller. But if you're valuing against Happy Meals, you'll think, ah, inflation's no big deal. But you value it against real estate. You value it against Bitcoin. You value it against uh, basketball cards. You'll realize how much the USD has been devaluing and inflating right in front of your eyes. So kind of scary, kind of scary. All right. Now, uh, last few things. Number one, big announcement for uh, for cryptos are us and uh, and George is everywhere. <laughs> Um, I did open up a merchant store. It's right on YouTube. Very easy. Uh, if you guys want some merch, check it out. I have it in the description of this video, right? So a lot of people have been asking for it, whether or not, you know, whether or not uh, I expand out beyond this. I don't know. I, I'll take requests, right? So I just have a few things. Bitcoin, Cryptos are Us, and I am George. But if you want to see anything else, request and I could add it up. All right. Now, before I get to Q&A, I do have a new sponsor today. And I think this is actually a pretty interesting project for a lot of you guys that's looking for alternative to Chainlink, a Kriya network. So a Kriya network is a new project that is in the Oracle space, but they feel like they have something or develop, they're developing something that is potentially better than Chainlink, which is, which is not an easy feat. A Kriya network right now, um, they're they're well first of all they are conducting ico so if you want to invest you could go ahead and invest right but there are a few things that they're working on that makes it pretty impressive right now ethereum you know it's congested we know chain link runs on top of ethereum and anytime you make a call it's pretty pretty expensive to do so so Korea is building upon not only ethereum but also Polkadot and cardano and making it so that it's all interoperability and with Oracle, so you can grab data from anywhere outside the blockchain world, within the blockchain world. And they're making it so that projects between the different chains can also grab data from each other. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's advantage. They are member of the Inner Work Alliance. And I have no idea who this alliance is. Uh, it seems impressive because when I went in here and I looked at it, it's a member-led industry organization where every member has equal voice in moving objectives forward. If you look at it, they have some pretty big names in here. Sponsor members, Microsoft, Accenture, right? And if you look at the principal members, Chainlink happens to be one of them. So obviously, <laughs> um, Chainlink is involved, uh, Hashgraph is involved, you got a bank ING involved, and uh, Kriya is involved now. So that's pretty good. I don't know if they share ideas or something. I'm sure there's some kind of collaboration going on, but they are also part of that network. Also, here's the CEO. I just found him, Dominic, and uh, he does have a few videos on YouTube that kind of explains what Korea Network does, the advantages of it. Um, they do have a white paper up, and one of the differences, one of the advantages, at least according to Dominic versus Chainlink, is the fact that only the, the data operators are able to spin up a node. So unlike Chainlink, if you want, if say you're a company that wants to offer data, you're, you have to be vetted and you operate that node and you can stake a crypto tokens to be able to do so. And people can stake their tokens on your node too for trustworthiness. And they don't have to stake a crypto tokens. They could stake Bitcoin, uh, Polkadot, you know, Ethereum. They could stake other things. And there's gonna be a reputation system that's built based off of that. So that's also another advantage. And lastly, uh, just looking at their ICO right now, they're, 
you know, they're not looking to raise much. Their goal is, of course, $30 million, but they have a soft cap of 500000 And this is pretty good. That almost 90% of their toko, uh, token supply is going to be to the public. For the founders, actually very little, 2%. So founders, I'm assuming just Dominic, he's only going to be collecting 2% of that, which is actually a very, very small amount versus a lot of projects out there where the, the founder supplies like 20, 25%, 30%. So that actually looks pretty good too. So that's a Korea network in a nutshell. If you're interested, I have all the links in the description of this video. All right. So next up, let's, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about Q and a, Oh, actually, um, I forgot. I did want to talk about I'll just go over real quick Binance and what's going on. Of course, I've been doing a lot of videos about Binance, Binance Chain, BNB. A lot of you guys have been paying attention, right? Um, but right now, I'm just going to sum it up. Well, right now, what's happening is people are paying attention that um, Ethereum is congested. It's like $90, $100 um, to basically make one single transaction, which means it could be a trade. If you're going to make a trade, basically, you need buy and sell that's like two hundred dollars i mean so DeFi is getting very very expensive for the casual person right now right if you're on uh ethereum which is why i think which is why i think a lot of these hot DeFi projects back in the day uh i shouldn't say back in the day like let's say last week or two weeks ago like you have someone like ave someone like uniswap compound maker sushi swap all these guys on DeFi Pulse. All these guys, the top guys, Synthetics, you know, um, Balancer, Badger, all these guys. Uh, they were hot. Very, 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 very hot. They climbed up thousands of the percents within a very short amount of time. But as many of you guys noticed, they kind of stalled out a little bit, right? I think it's because of what's going on. Because that Azure casual person that's trading or borrowing and staking or lending they don't want to pay the outrageous fees so what's going on is they're looking at alternatives now there are a lot of DeFi projects that's coming to polka dot and second layer solutions but right now there's a lot that's already active on binance chain and i just covered about binance smart chain yesterday and some of the projects on there and the total locked in value of bnb and and the DeFi projects on there, and they're all skyrocketing right now because Binance Smart Chain is compatible with Ethereum, Ethereum's EV, uh, EVM, and you know there's a lot of a lot of projects that's already running, right? So that's ultimately why I think it's happening. And plus, the big thing from yesterday was that Coinbase's ICO or IPO was, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Coinbase is evaluated at $77 billion. So people look at it, Binance is way bigger than Coinbase. So you look at even after the pump, they're $31 billion versus Coinbase is $77 billion. There's still a big gap, right? So people are also looking at that. And plus BNB is deflationary. They do endless coin burns, which makes the supply lower. And that's very unique too versus some of these other projects, right? So that's ultimately why Binance coin is going up and I think it's going to go up a lot more, right? So I'm losing my voice now. I'm just speaking way too much. Okay, so that is in a nutshell what's happening with Binance Coin. Um, so I'll turn to you guys for some Q&A. Man, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Back in the day, 48 hours ago. Oh, I did miss some super chats. Um, I saw a big one, Francisco. Appreciate it. And there's another one before ingredients. What do you think about crypto.com? Do you think it could be big like Binance Coin? Crypto.com has been around for a while. Yeah, they they could be. They could be. They have their you know crypto cards and they have a full fledged exchange. They do DeFi. Um, so they could. They definitely could. Another project outside of Binance is Voyager. And Voyager is also going up to the moon right now. You could see that it's up. Now it's 450, you know, almost a billion dollars. People are looking at exchanges, the promising ones, and seeing how 
um, since Coinbase is worth so much, they should also be worth so much, right? So Voyager is a project I covered recently. I really like them. Uh, badass before, um, do you think ETH will be 10K by August 2021? Um, I think ETH could be 10K by the end of the year. Not specifically August, but I would say by December time frame, they could be at $10,000. So hopefully that answers that. And then going down, where is it? Uh, Marlon says, thanks for your daily streams. What are your thoughts on AP3? AP3 is also Oracle play, but I think uh, right now they have to prove themselves. I think a lot of people, including including in Korea, um, are trying to take down Chainlink or become the next Chainlink, but they have to really prove themselves. Right, just to say that you have an Oracle setup doesn't mean that you're just go overtake Chainlink. You need to show that there are people that trust you, right? Most importantly, that DeFi projects are willing to trust you and other projects are willing to trust you. So AP3 is up and coming. People ask me about it, but ultimately for Oracle plays, you have to get that trust level. That that's the most important thing. Uh Podge asks, Hey George, thanks for the money. I don't know what money, uh, <laughs> but I'll take it. Is there any way for ETH-based DeFi platform like Aave Unite to transist or utilize B, uh, C or are they stuck? No, that's that's one of the big things about Binance Smart Chain is it's um, it's EVM compatible. So you know any project that's on that's on Ethereum can possibly port over to utilize Binance Smart Chain relatively easy. There's still some work, but the code that's used for smart contracts to utilize a virtual machine is still the same. So yeah, you know, um, there is definitely a way for them to do so. Right now, I think they're all looking at it, either creating their own second layer solution or utilizing a second layer solution or just moving to another blockchain altogether. Hey George, good morning. What do you what do I do with my Nulls bag now? It's tanked. I have Nulls deep. Any ideas? You hold it. That's what you do. You keep holding it. Nulls actually has some. Uh, they actually gained some traction recently. They're about seventy cents, which is way higher than where they were previously. Yeah, they're seventy one cents. So Nulls is actually coming back up. Now, once Nulls get breaks a dollar, which is a point that they haven't been able to do for a long time. I think if they break a dollar, especially now when all coin season is like halfway, halfway there, I think they can definitely gain momentum. If Nulls gains momentum, they will shoot up big. To reach a billion dollars again would not be that hard for them. They just need some love and attention right now. It's just no one's paying attention to them. But they are executing. They have a lot more projects that's built on top of the Nulls blockchain, utilizing them. Utilizing their new staking mechanism. So I would say you just hold it. <laughs> Do you think XLM could hit above a dollar? Um, yeah. That's only double from here. Yeah. Very, very possible. Stellar, I'm neutral on. There's just not a lot of, whole lot of things on there that that excite me so um so it's kind of stagnant right now you know there's there's a possibility maybe they they will be uh sued by the sec because they also did uh ico before but yeah to get to a dollar certainly um on the hunt says um Neo 3.0 building Oracle is supposed to work with Chainlink. See, the thing is, Neo 3.0 was supposed to utilize Chainlink, and then um, they decided to build their own, which is fine. You know, you're able to build your own, but you better make sure that the built-in Oracle is really, really robust, right? That it can basically stay up and never be manipulated or hacked. And Cardano's doing the same thing. Cardano's trying to build their own Oracle system too. So a lot of blockchain projects want to utilize their own. They don't want to rely on Chainlink, which is the big dog. I get it. But just like all other Oracles, you got you to gotta prove yourself. You got to prove yourself. <clears throat> Joe, 
Joey asks, hey, George, have you seen BitBoy's video where he found some manipulation on Ethereum? Do you think you could help him out? I know you're really good. I addressed that yesterday. I looked at his video, and I think he, he presents some, some good, let's just say, theories. There was no concrete evidence shown. And uh, and I did start looking into it, but I don't know if I'm going to find it. I mean, the F2 pool thing for Bitcoin was so easy to spot. Ethereum is not so much. So whether or not there's true manipulation, I don't know. And right now, I don't think so, purely based on the fact that it just broke all-time high and it keeps going up. And it's up even today, 6% today. It's above 1900 right? So I don't think there's actually mass price per, per suppression at all. Um, but I will look into it. It's an interesting topic. So, but yeah, that's that's my thought. I mean, there was no concrete evidence given, and it's hard to find. Sometimes, sometimes you never find it. Sometimes you can never find it. But well, I'll take a look. Risk of BNB declared like a security, like XRP. Well, the good thing about BNB is they didn't they didn't sell in the U.S. and uh, that's why Binance created Binance.us. So. No, there's. I don't think there's any risk, and even even if they get sued, it's not like companies um, don't get sued. EOS was sued, Tezos was sued, uh, Kick was sued by the SEC, and they paid a they paid a fine, and that was it. The problem with XRP is their lawsuit is different because the SEC is not suing Ripple, um, not only Ripple. They're suing two of the founders, <laughs> Brad and Chris Larson. Because they personally sold a ton of XRP without disclosing. They sold hundreds of millions of dollars with XRP without disclosing. So obviously there's a there's more to it than that, right? So it's not just the project um, raising a security sale. It's because they also sold and pocketed hundreds of millions of dollars. So it's a little bit different with XRP. Uh, Vthor, Vthor is fine because I love VeChain, Vthor. You know, goes up whenever VeChain does well. But just to give you a, a hint, VThor is not deflationary. It's inflationary. So it does. There's more VThor tokens created based on how many VET there is. Now, VET itself is deflationary. So there's a set supply. So um, there is a difference there. That's why, for me, I'd much rather hold VET than VThor. Uh, Brian, Brian says, there's no question. He just, uh, says, um, sold all my uni and Ave and all in on BNB and cake. I see Binance smart chain taking over ETH in the long run. 2,500 is achievable for sure. I mean, um, yesterday I was just talking about, right? The network effect and the network effect of Ethereum can't be under looked at, I guess. Uh, the network effect is real. That's why it is you know, 10x more than basically all other blockchain protocols, right? So to overtake Ethereum, it's going to be really, 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 really hard at this point, unless you get some major, major adoption. And Ethereum, despite the fact that it is so slow, it has a network effect, and it is the innovator. It created basically smart contracts, right? Created ICOs, created um, DeFi, and created NFTs. <laughs> So everything is being created on Ethereum. So that's why a lot of institutional investors getting in, they see it as the big dog of this space. But the others will definitely climb and climb up in a big way. Binance, CZ created a, such a huge ecosystem for BNB. He has created such a big ecosystem where BNB is so relevant in everything. It's really genius if you think about it, right? So I do think Binance coins go go up in a big way. Um, but besides BNB and pancake swap, pancake swap, I didn't even realize until this morning because how high it's been flying. It's like $1.5 billion. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible and incredible. When I covered them, they were like 200, 300 million. They're 1.5 billion and they're really close to sushi swap now because a lot of people from Uniswap and sushi swap is moving to pancake swap, but yeah, besides Cake, there's a lot of other ones, a lot of AMMs on, um, on Binance Chain. Um, so watch out for those. Do I see, do I see GRT breaking news? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. What kind of news? 
Elrond, Polkadot, Ice Bandit asked about Elrond, Polkadot. Both are very good projects. Um, Polkadot is fan, it's neck and neck with Cardano. Uh, Gavin Wood, he knows what he's doing. Very smart guy. They have a huge loyal base. Elrond is interesting. Elrond has pumped up way, way, way more than I expected over the last few weeks, months. But this is what I've always said about Elrond. When I first looked into him like six months ago, uh, six or eight months ago, when they were very, very low, I'm like, here's the thing. Uh, they're a promising blockchain, but there's a lot of them out there. Um, they utilize sharding, some kind of advanced way of sharding, which means that they can scale faster. Okay, but there's a lot of projects that do that too. What really separates Elrond from everyone else? What's the one thing that separates them from everyone else? And there is that one thing. That one thing is Elrond's leaders, the, the CTO and CEO, um, they made a lot of money with Bitcoin before. And they have some experience. They were part of the NEM team and so forth. But the one thing that they have is they invested in Binance when Binance was nothing. They invested in Binance as CZ. They put a significant amount of money in there. And they are part owners of Binance. And I've always said this. If you're part owners of Binance, there's no way Binance is going to let you down. <laughs> Seeing how big Binance is now, they, they will be carried by Binance. And that has held true. That is why they have come up so much, so fast, and they continue to grow despite the fact there are a lot of other blockchains out there that does the same thing. But because they have that Binance effect, they're part of the family. So they are being carried far, and I think that will continue going forward. I don't think that's going to stop. What's your thought on BTT? Can I increase like Doge did? No, because it's BTT and it's owned by Justin. It's owned by Tron, so no. Tron has burned all their marketing power. Justin has burned through it. He had a lot before, but in crypto winter, he burned through it all. No one trusts anything he says now. So it doesn't seem like anything he does really helps any of his projects. You know, all the ones that, that he has, you know, tried to buy or create it or whatever, they're all doing poorly. They're all doing poorly. And I don't think he's doing anything great with BTT right now. Jesse, no problem. I looked at Origin Trail before. It's in the supply chain space, competes with VeChain. I didn't like it. I think if you're in a supply chain space, you go with the biggest, and that's VeChain. And VeChain is pretty much dominant in that category. Um, so I don't think that's going to change. Tron was a great movie. It sure was. I noticed you changed your avatar too, or your profile picture. JF, with anything, there's always, there's always a dip, no matter what, okay? No matter if you see something go up straight to the moon for like months, eventually there's a dip. So you have to make a decision whether or not you want to get in or wait. But I always say, rather than try to guess top or bottom, just dollar cost average in. If you want to get into something like BNB, sprout your buys, buy a little now. And then if it does dip, you buy a little more and a little more. It takes the headaches away. It really takes the pressure and headaches away. You dollar cost average and you sprout your buys. Then you have no worries. Lund disappeared. Lunar disappeared a long time ago. Nulls I just talked about. They're still executing and they're coming up. So I'm still waiting for them. To go full blown, go into full blown mode after uh, breaking one dollar, which they seem like they're heading up there. <laughs> Drew says XRP has the worst fundamentals up, fundamentals possible. XRP is created based on a good idea, but the token economics of it, and probably due to the greed of Ripple team, kind of ruined it. Um, yeah, so I, I actually, for one, at one point in time. Once I understood what XRP was doing, I actually was really bullish on XRP. For the time being, I thought, oh, it's great. And then until I stepped back and really thought about what they're doing, then I realized, oh, no, what they're doing is actually isn't so great. Um, because XRP, 
as much as they want to say it's not a non-security, uh, it is. It is because it's uh, it's a set supply. It doesn't make any sense. If XRP was a utility token, it should be inflationary because it should be a stable coin. That makes more sense. If you want to be a cross-border payment network and you want to be that, that middle currency, that bridge currency between all currencies, you don't want fluctuations. You want it to be stable like a stable coin. But back then, stable coins didn't exist and didn't, you know, no one wanted to make a stable coin because how can you make money if a coin always stays at $1? So that's why XRP, created by Jeff McCaleb and other, you know, obviously they market it as a utility, but really it's a security. And that's why uh, they made it the structure it is. But, you know, if you think about it, it's just the token economics of XRP is horrible. Horrible for utility. It's great for a store value, but it's horrible for utility. But now they're claiming they're not a store value, that they, they are a utility. So it just goes against what their their mission is. USDA on Algorand and how this affect the price at Algo. I'm not sure. You mean USDC, not USDA? Is USDA another stable coin? I'm pretty sure it's USDC, right? Oh, there is a USDA. <laughs> uh, okay, is there their own stable coin? USDA, okay. Issued by AP. DB for Asian Pacific region allows users to import money. Yeah, I don't think that's going to do anything for Algorand. All right. I think that's pretty much it. I'll let you guys go. Overall, today, pretty good day. Pretty good day. Bitcoin is still around 52,000. It's holding despite the fact that the market is pretty red today. You know, today is like a breather day for, for the overall market, but Bitcoin is taking no break. And neither is Binance Coin or anything that's on Binance right now. But big story of the day is Bill Gates turning more neutral and maybe one day turning into a Bitcoin bull just like everyone else. So he's starting to convert. And you have big gold bugs now that are just converting because they just see it's pointless to keep holding gold. One Bitcoin is just such a better store of value at this point, right? So the conversion is happening. It has been happening for a while and it continues to happen more and more each and every day, which is why Bitcoin continues to keep going higher and higher and higher and higher, right? All right. Thanks for tuning in. As always, smash the like, subscribe to the channel and, uh, and make sure you tune in tonight. 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Check out my Patreon page if you want to chat with me and others and get some exclusive content also check out my teachable page if you do want to get a crash course on bitcoin you have no idea anything about bitcoin then you definitely want to check out the course and check out my new merch store if you want some good merchandise check it out everything is in the description of this video all right guys until tonight later bye, -bye.